We're gonna need to pick up more coffee when we go into town. I'll put that on the list. And I just remembered I need more deodorant. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I looked out and I saw the rain. I wanted it to go away. I felt the weight of it all come down. From the deafening sound But you were here Oh my love Thank you Second morning in a row of such luxurious treatment <laughs> You were there Holding my hand I seriously don't look over there Got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. Burns me, we blow on it. Mmm. Good. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Oh, it's hot. Oh, thank you. Mmm. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. This is the 53rd passage of the Tao, which feels really relevant to today's climate. The great way is easy, yet people prefer the side paths. Be aware when things are out of balance, stay centered within the Tao. When rich speculators prosper while farmers lose their land. When government officials spend money on weapons instead of cures. When the upper class is extravagant and irresponsible while the poor have nowhere to turn. All this is robbery and chaos. It is not in keeping with the Tao. Eat the fucking rich. <laughs> A baby on the ground. Baby's on the ground. Mommy. <laughs> oh, I hear a cow. The cow's here. Oh, there's some cows over there. Wait. Should we go see them on our walk? Shall we? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Today is Sunday in the middle of January, and it's our first week of camping in the van. We're at our first campsite. We are currently in southern Arizona, about 40 minutes outside of Tucson. 
near the town of Catalina. I did not think that I was going to enjoy Arizona all that much just because last time we were in a desert landscape, our tent got completely destroyed. We were in a storm that kept us up all night long and I just kind of had a bad taste in my mouth about it. But I love that we started off here because our experience in the van has been so enjoyable and it just makes me really, really appreciate how much of a home and how much stability the van provides for us because it can protect us from those elements and it's beautiful out in the desert once you're not completely exposed by to all the elements exactly yeah. and yesterday in the afternoon it got kind of windy and it was nice because if we were in the tent we would just have been <laughs> in this like blowing you know <laughs> dome but here we had the doors mostly closed but you know having all the windows we still felt like we were outside and we just had a relaxing afternoon just lounging in the bed Is that yummy You relaxed? You're done. So right now, I am carrying this rock, which is one of two of Uma's babies that she demanded we bring with us for the hike. That was the only way we could do a hike, is if we brought her babies. And so, we thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about... Hey, crying? Is the baby crying? No, no Uma crying. Uma's crying? Uma's uh, Uma babies are kicking. Uma's babies are kicking? Yeah. So we thought we would use today to talk about her sense of imagination and creativity and the topic of toys. Now I know the topic of this video says why Uma doesn't have toys. And it's not that she has no toys, it's just that she has only a handful of toys. And just after being out here a couple days, we realized how little she actually reaches for these few toys that we even brought. So it's been one week since we started camping again, but this time with the van. And I think the thing that I was the most worried about was Uma missing and really craving all the things from the lifestyle that she'd become acclimated to. So access to all sorts of different types of food and all of the access to electronics and all of these kind of games and toys, tons and tons of toys. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to like need a huge detox. Same with us too, to be honest. And I was completely blown away by how much her disposition completely transformed when we got her back out in nature. And I feel so silly even talking about it because it sounds like I'm lying or being dramatic or trying to sell something, but it truly was like night and day. All of a sudden she was so much more aware of her environment. She was like innately and intrinsically curious about the things that are, were around her. So far, even just from pivoting from being back in the city for the last couple months to being out here for just a few days and seeing how little Uma reaches for those things and, and seeing how much more she is enthralled in the natural world and its textures and feelings and looking up at the sky at the moon and feeling the dirt and playing with the ash in the fire pit and asking to go swimming already. It's just making me realize that we are on the right track and that these are values that I want to expand on and want to go further with. It's just been so interesting because the few toys that we did bring, she's not even really playing with. Like instead she creates these elaborate storylines with like rocks and sticks and you know, they become her babies and they become, you know, different monsters or ghosts or mermaids and and those are the things that she becomes attached to. So now at this point we're like, do we even need the few toys that we did bring? And it's not so much that I think there's anything intrinsically wrong with toys, but when we found out we were pregnant with Uma, I just started to have these really romantic visions of what I wanted her childhood to be, like most parents do, I suppose. And for me, it was swimming in wild waters and getting muddy and playing in the dirt and using our imaginations and having really simple days, unburdened days, I guess. This has just been so comforting and validating, validating for me as a father and as a parent that, that we are wired to need very little to be happy. And that's the same for 35 year olds like myself and it's the same for a two and a half year old like Uma. Because that's something I've really put a value on for myself becoming an adult is time in wild places, time outside, time away from the noise 
of the city and of life and just to really tap back into who I am and, and really just falling in love with the natural world has been such a really like centering practice for me. How comforting to realize that we are capable of peace and that we're capable of feeling happiness with such little things, with so few things. And it's out there for us and it's not destructive toward the planet. I think that children deserve more from childhood than what society has placed value on. I'm just so happy that we're building a life where we're giving her that environment where it's easier to tap into that. And it's easier for us to love her. and It's easier for us to love ourselves. This philosophy is more about what I want to offer as a gift to Uma for her to remember as her childhood and not so much the act of denying her something. Babies. Go get the monster. Baby. You want to go get your babies back? Baby back there. Yeah, let's go get them. Ah, back a baby. Ah, back a baby. Ah, ah, baby, you this way or dry away way. The babies drove away. Yeah. <gasps> we better go get them. Uh -huh. Let's go. Ah. <gasps> There's that kind of apple. Does she yeah, like this hopefully kind? Hopefully she likes the yellow one. Understand? What would I do without my life coach Elliot? Coaching me how to find an apple out of a bag. <laughs> you don't like that. If I don't do it, he comes ask. <laughs> Look it. Eat it. Here you go. She needs you to take one bite. One bite out of it? Mm. Mhm. Mm I've been doing intermittent fasting for the past week and a half, which means I don't eat for like a 16-hour window. So by the time it hits this time, he's angry. <laughs> so don't coach me on how to find an apple during this time, okay? <laughs> Where are the fucking forks? Don't curse on me, the forks are in there. See, don't be asking me where stuff is if you don't want coached. <laughs> so much yummy food, thanks to our refrigerator. You'll never hear me asking for McDonald's or Subway ever again. It's not even that we really love those foods. It was just like more out of I love obligation. Them, I <laughs> um, so on the menu today, I'm having a fried egg with some kimchi on some bread, and Matt's having my you, mine always needs to be more doctored up, especially when I haven't eaten for 16 hours. It's especially true. So I'm gonna do scrambled eggs with cheese and with pepper and avocado and I'm gonna put it in a burrito and then I'm gonna fry the burrito. On the, on the, on the um, high comb he was like, ooh, and then I'm gonna put the, <laughs> the whole burrito in the skillet and I'm gonna fry the outside of the tortilla. I, I really <laughs> He's very excited. through what my meal is gonna be because I think about it for so long. But that's all stuff that we didn't get to have unless if we went to the grocery store and immediately ate it, so. Or we were okay with the risk in it like three days in with an <laughs> yeah. egg that's just been sitting in the sun. Which was possible when we were really cold in the mountains. Exactly. But this fridge has a game changer. Even though I'm so hungry, I'm still being a proper gentleman and making El Pell's meal first. Aww. Better get a BJ. <laughs> <laughs> How's your brunch? It's everything I could have dreamed of. It really is. <laughs> well, Matthew's back there voguing. <laughs> it's like the late afternoon now. We spent the afternoon. It gets hot here in the afternoon. And now it's kind of chilly. But anyways, we went to Walmart this afternoon. <laughs> I don't know this if it's a really good story. <laughs> so, anyways, we left the campsite today. Um, 
when we were in Nebraska, we tested out our sink plumbing by running water through it just to make sure everything was working as it needed to. Well, the water in there froze and it cracked the like plumbing part in half that I connect the like um, drain tube to. So anyways, we went to get some super glue. I got the pieces lined up, got it all figured out, and the glue is hard as a rock. But that's my good story. Um, we're just realizing, you know, now that we're in the van, there's so many things that we realize that we want to upgrade and tweak and fix. We have the books up in here, but as soon as we drive, everything just comes crashing down to the bed. So that is not going to be a long-term solution. So I was thinking about maybe putting like a bookshelf along this sort of upper wall. Uma took a little nap on the way home from the grocery store. And she had a chocolate cookie before she fell asleep. Hi, honey. You want up? You okay? Aw, come here. Well, I'm going to get the groceries put away. Uma asked for some hummus for dinner, so we'll probably do that. You want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. Hi. Just got to get our groceries put away. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing, too, is our refrigerator. It's supposed to be on, like, a track so it can slide in and out, but... Um, it busted off this one track. We've been trying to get it fixed, but we just can't get it. And I think we're going to have to uh, get handy ourselves and put some like bottom sliders on here or something because the side ones just don't seem to be working. So not so hard though. Actually, that's probably a good point to uh, wrap up the video. Anything you want to add before I really wrap it up? No, I'm so grateful for all of you. And if you have any questions or if you want us to explore particular things, just right in, those, in that comment section and let us know what you're thinking. For sure, and like I said, the van tour is coming. <laughs> Ooh, we got cows. It's the big one, the bull. Ooh, he's over there, he's like, be quiet. Um, the van tour is coming, like I said, I just we just wanted to get a couple things fixed up so that way we can show you everything in full operating order, but if there's anything about the van that you're really interested in seeing, we'll gladly show you, so comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. by my side As that drone flew away, I realized you could see our neighbors and we never told you guys about our first van life neighborhood experience. Yes. So first over here we've got Brad from Canada. He's probably going to watch this video because I told him about our channel. So hi Brad, he's super nice, he's a cyclist <laughs> um, and he um, showed us a bunch of cool van stuff like safety features and stuff that I do think I'm excited to implement, blah, 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 blah. And then we've got these people over here and I don't know anything about them, but I know their dog's name is Pickles. And, and I have, a, I have a, a belief that you should never name your animals based off of a food, food item. But other than that, they seem really but lovely. Pickles is really cute. And, and they play I the guitar. agree with naming your animal food items. But yeah, they play guitar and they were serenading the desert <laughs> the other day and it was really magical. And then finally, and there are other neighbors who are no longer here anymore. But I was cooking a burrito and this guy had been sitting out on his lawn chair. I got it. Oh, she's got a booger. Um, he's been sit he was sitting out on his lawn chair, shirtless, hanging out, seemed very relaxed, and out of nowhere, his girlfriend comes out. We didn't even realize there was a second one in there. Yes, yeah, and she's <laughs> screaming, I don't want to be here, I told you this. <laughs> but they, they left, so, yep, just today in the neighborhood, <laughs> you got the dirts here. Yeah, so, that's it. Okay, for real, bye this time.